I've been sitting on this project for God knows how long. The faceplate is probably over 10 years old. And of course, that's when someone sends me a goddamn message. I was sitting here in silence watching NVIDIA's shitty ass press conference showing us an overpriced graphics card. Not a single message. The second I turn on the microphone, here we go. But anyway, this video is to show you how to put together a Stormtrooper helmet kit. Usually it's fairly simple, depending on the vendor you buy from. It could be anything from ABS plastic to polystyrene or HIPS plastic. I believe it's HPDE or something like that. It's a brown plastic. And that's what the original Stormtrooper helmets were made of. And they were painted up. Oh, here's a clip of Choo Choo. All you need is smiles. Lots and lots of smiley smiles. Your sweet pink mouth goes north, not south, and just smile. Shit. The original pieces were actually brown and painted white. That's how you'll see the best known case of this is Empire Strikes Back, the Cloud City Trooper. When Darth Vader is talking to Lando Calrissian, who, you know, sold out Han Solo, you'll see one trooper has brown spotches on his helmet. That's because the paint was peeling. You're going to need scissors that can cut through plastic. Next up, using a Dremel. You will notice that my Dremel work here is subpar. I'm doing this because I'm trying to not hurt the camera angle so you can see what I'm doing. Don't use a Dremel in this fashion. Please don't, it's the wrong way. Sandpaper is always needed. You'll need about 150 grit all the way up to 1,000, if not more. Actually, to be safe, have up to 3,000, depending on if you wanna do a high gloss buff paint job. If not, ignore. And we're gonna clean up all the edges because you don't want those cut in your face and whatnot. Next up, we're opening the teeth area. This is probably to help you breathe, most likely. These helmets get pretty goddamn hot. And that is probably all it's for. I really don't know. Yeah, I never really put much thought into it. Depending on what trooper you want to do would dictate how many teeth you're going to cut open. Since I'm going for the sort of sand trooper, stunt trooper look, I'm going to cut open every tooth on the helmet. Usually with the hero helmet, you probably leave two teeth uncut, maybe? I can't really remember. You might wonder what the hero helmet is, and that's the helmet Han Solo and Luke Skywalker wore in A New Hope. You'll also need files for the teeth if you want to get that clean square look, which most people who are working on Stormtroopers want it to look as authentic as possible. But in all actuality, there wasn't a lot of thought put into the Stormtroopers in the sense of they didn't put a lot of effort into it. The helmets were all slap dab together. So the more you screw up, most likely the more authentic this is going to look. You know, just so you know, don't overthink this. It doesn't have to be pristine and perfect because they weren't in the films. You may notice that there are discrepancies in the filming, as in, in some areas you'll see the eyes cut open and others the eyes are closed. That's because I mistakenly lost some of my files and then found them again and had to put this back together. I'm showing you the pre-cut area of the ears. You kind of want to test where you want them to be, mark off things, how far you want the brow trim to go. Use a pencil for this, it'll be much easier than a pen, in all honesty, but I was working with what I had. Once again, you don't have to go to these extremes. I'm just doing it out of force of habit. But believe me, I'm half-assing this project. Because this isn't a helmet for anything other than I had it sitting around for years and figured, let's do it. More sanding, filing, and cleanup work. Remember, it's best to sort of keep the edges smooth as possible. Because you don't want it to cut you. You'll notice that there are little dips in the helmet and the dome. These are the sort of areas where you should be drilling. By the way, the earbud here is incorrect. This earbud was modified to once again mirror the Hero helmet. The Hero helmets had three earbuds. The normal Stoon Trooper helmets had about four buds, I believe, on the ear. So, once again, don't mind that. Also, because of this, I only use one screw in that area. Should be flathead screws, by the way, and I'm using 
not those because I'm an asshole. Next up, I'm clipping the helmet to make sure that the fitment seems just about right here, if at all possible. I would suggest doing this so you know exactly what your helmet's gonna look like or what you're shooting for. You just don't wanna start drilling and putting things together without having some sort of a plan because these helmets are asymmetrical and things can go wrong pretty easily. as I'm sure I'll demonstrate in a moment. As you see there, something went wrong. Don't worry, these helmets are meant to look like shit anyway. I would also suggest using smaller screws with a shorter thread for putting together the helmet in this area or holding it in place. Usually what was actually done to the films were pop rivets, but since I'm not 100% sure of what I want my fitment to be and I may just change things, I go with screws. It gives me the freedom to take it apart and change placement of the dome ever so slightly. If I was 100% committed, I'd use a pop rivet. 200 grit sandpaper to file down any of those rough edges. I hate narrating these, I really do. I'm probably the worst person on the planet to do tutorials for this sort of thing. I'd much rather just like go in a room with a bunch of people go, okay, this is how it's done. Follow me and do exactly what you see. Now tie a rope around your penis and jump from a tree. I'm using hot glue, actually, to hold the dome to the faceplate. This is sort of a trick that was developed in recent years. I don't know if they did it in the films, but it's something that I picked up from other Trooper helmet makers, and it's quite beneficial. It saves you a lot of time and effort, and it cleans up the fact that some areas of the dome may not fit the faceplate. In my case, the dome is from eBay, and the faceplate was something someone gave me years ago, and depending on mold, mold degradation, depending on the plastic, depending on someone's vacuum former setup. There are any number of variables that could factor into the fitment of parts if you just take random parts from different makers that could create issues with the helmet itself looking incorrect or wonky er than usual, such is the case with this. currently trying to figure out where I want to drill the hole to hold the ear cap on. And finally I just gave, oh yeah, you don't want to go too hard on that or you have that issue. Oh boy, that was a fuck up of epic proportions. But thankfully it's not a commission job or anything, so that's why I'm kind of going through this willy-nilly. It's sort of a guideline to give you an idea of what the hell to do if you actually get a Stormtrooper helmet kit. You know, I'm not saying this is the best tutorial ever because I didn't really put the effort in. I was just like, uh, oh, well, today I got some free time. I want to do something creative rather than being pissed off at the world around me. Let me create today. Let me pull back the hate. And as you can see, like I said before, usually there would be two screws flathead for the earbud. Only the hero helmets had one screw, but since I had a three bud ear, I figured why not? I'd make a hodgepodge helmet. This is all stuff that a normal person wouldn't notice or care about, so I don't even know why I'm telling you, but I guess I should give you full disclosure just in case someone follows this and they do something weird like I'm doing and then they go to like some sort of Star Wars convention and a guy pulls them over like, what are you doing guy? You have a, you have a stunt helmet, but you're using hero earbuds and only one screw and not even a flathead for the ear? Are you a fucking 
A pleb? What is wrong with you? Here we are cutting out an ear. Now, I wanted to show you this part because the other ear was cut years ago and just sat in a box. This one was untrimmed. Now, the beauty is untrimmed ears, you can trim them however you like to get whatever look you want. So if you have more trim on the ear, you're more likely to be able to hide the overlapping of the back plate over the face plate. This is what I was going for here. I was gonna give you a complete contrast to show you exactly what a more tightened look would look like versus a more willy-nilly ear put together. Once again, it's a learning experience. Also use pencils if you can. Pens tend to be a pain in the ass. Marking your areas helps again. Remember, this takes a little while and depending on how much you care, how much energy you wanna put forth, could really dictate what your Stormtrooper helmet looks like, depending on how important it is to you. Uh, so we're back at the Dremel. That's always fun, right? Cutting up plastic. Well, yes, those are Darth Vader Empire Strikes Back gloves. I had an extra set left over, so I use them for all my prop making or painting or cutting of stuff. Like, usually I use them with metal, so that way the hot metal doesn't burn my hand when I'm cutting it. Now that I think I have an acceptable look for my earbud, I'm going to tape it in place with rice paper tape. I really shouldn't have used it on this because rice paper tape is really hard to get a hold of if you don't have a body shop. It is the best masking tape on the market. I stand by that. Once again, I just go through this really willy-nilly. I just zipped it right in, full blast. Don't do that. If you care, take drilling slowly at a lower speed. I gave you fair warning. Hopefully you watched this far before you made a move. Now we have an idea of what the hell this helmet looks like put together. Depending on where you place your dome, earbuds, etc., can greatly affect the overall look of the helmet. It can look smaller than it actually it, it it can look smaller than it actually is or bigger. It all depends on how you put it together, which is quite interesting. Also, all stormtrooper helmets are asymmetrical. So before you start axing me, you know, like why does it look like that? It's uneven. All the real helmets are like this. Using some primer in this instance, you don't really need to because most Rust-Oleum paints will bond to plastic quite easily but I had an area where I was using Magic Sculpt to cover a hole that was in the faceplate. And I figured I might as well prime it because the faceplate isn't exactly great. As I said, it was given to me. It isn't a perfect piece, if you will. It's more or less a throwaway bit. And I figured, let's see if I can get rid of some horrendous blemishes. Now we follow it up with some white. I cheaped out on this. I went to the hardware store and got some real cheap white. I didn't use any automotive paints because they're too expensive to waste on something I don't really care much about. As this is just a tutorial, I'm giving you a guideline on what you can do to get it done. Very simply, low cost, real easy hardware store pickups. Bing, bang, boom, you could be done in a day if you care. Oh, by the way, wear a mask. This stuff does not smell very good. And if you can, try to match your Rust-Oleum paint brands. Otherwise, when you clear coat them, which I didn't record, it'll lead to spider webbing and cracking. Next up, I'm going to try and eliminate some of these things. As I said before, 1,000 to 3,000. Usually 3,000 feels like a piece of foam, by the way. Uh, this is old and needs to be replaced. And we just work over the dome. 1,000 grit, 1,500 grit, 2,000. Then I just jump to 3,000. And then next up, we use Meguiar's Ultimate Compound. Using this will help even out the sort of clear coat. 
and give it a very glossy, beautiful shine. Usually you use this on automotive paints. I don't know if after this you can wax it, you can give it a shot, but I don't know what the outcome would be in all honesty. As you can see, Chuchi loves to help. Chuchi's an artist. She figured scratching it will improve the work that much more. The paint I'm using is Humberall paints. You'll need number five glossy. That is actually what they used in the film. If you can find black flat, that's also a good color to grab, and the blue. But I can't remember what number the blue is for Humberall. But these are the paints that were actually used on all the Stormtrooper suits in the films. There you go, trade secret. Just gave you some information most people don't share. And now, just sit back and enjoy painting. Once again, you don't have to go this hard on the paint. Like for real, it doesn't have to be perfect because the real helmets were far from perfect. They were like just slapdash painted. But as most people who do props are, you try to emulate what the slapdash look look like. If you can find them, grab them. Grab some vinyl decal Stormtrooper face plate blue strips because hand painting them is a real pain in the fucking ass. And unless you've got an amazingly steady hand, it's not worth the effort. I'm not gonna joke with you. These that I'm using are the correct color, but I think the design is more reminiscent of, Re of Return of the Jedi. This may be a deal breaker for some people as authenticity is everything. Uh, that's up for you to decide as there are many vendors who sell these and any look you're looking to accomplish is readily available on eBay or through the power of Google, just doing a little searching. Me personally, as I said before, I'm strapped for time and I'm using items I have around the house and not taking it too seriously. Next up, the hoof mics, real simple. Uh, you can find these on eBay as well. Just Google Stormtrooper mic tips or hoof mics. I'm using some real old poorly casted pieces of crap that I had in a box that otherwise I wouldn't use for my own personal helmet or for someone else's. They're just uh, poor recasts. So hopping on eBay, you'll find a multitude of correct ones that come with everything you need. Since I am using some crappy cast of these, I have to go through the hassle of finding my own mesh material. You can probably buy like a strainer at Walmart and cut out some circles. Or if you have a spare computer around that has a filter that you don't use, you could take one of the filters such as this here and cut it to your specifications with scissors or an X-Acto knife, whichever works best for you. Then you just work it in and you're done. I might add a little silver lining to it just so I can replicate that sort of poorly painted on black over silver like they did for the films. And this is pretty much what the helmet should look like, all said and done. It looks decent. It came out pretty well. I didn't add neck trim. You can find that on eBay. And the lenses, you can also find on eBay, but they're grossly overpriced. It's basically a green film strip, and they run around $11 a piece. And you need two of them if you're going to wear it outside, because they're very easily seen through. Once again, this is what was used in the film. It's almost laughably bad, but 
other than that, it's a finished piece, I'd say. Uh, next up, I'll probably show you how to weather a Stormtrooper helmet and armor to make it look like it's been in sand dunes for years upon years. And that should do it for me. I'm out of here, my dudes. I'm extremely tired for some reason. It's sleepy. Pro oh, that's right. I was watching the NVIDIA conference. It just drained me of life. It was so goddamn boring. Uh, rate, comment, subscribe, so choose to. If not, to hell with it. You know how I roll, man. I can't ask anyone to give more of a shit than me in the age of apathy. But the more of you that do follow me, the louder my voice gets in a very odd YouTube landscape these days, wouldn't you say? As always, thank you to all the channel supporters I have gained over the years.